Vlade Divac and Shaquille O'Neal. I just about set Chris Webber is laughing and teasing Rick Fox. Everybody up at Staples Center and the Lakers control attack. Shaquille, the kick out. Kobe feet inside the box. Missed in close and it partially blocked. Weber has been on a tremendous roll of late. Milk him early, set the tone. He can take Samaki Walker. Robert Ory is coming off the bench right now. Bibby around a pick, got it back. The Divac missed the jumper, and Walker up to the rebound. One of the Kings' game plans, attack Shaq, make him guard the ball. Vladi Divac has got to knock down that jump shot. Fisher outside, got three. Good opener for the Lakers. Bill Jackson telling us that the keys for Los Angeles find the enthusiasm and the team chemistry that marks championship play. Then he tried to come back with a jumper of his own. Also get some bench production, which has been woefully inadequate. And the first collision of the day, Shaquille and Lottie Diva. The two king possessions have gone right at Shaq. Vladi setting a screen time and time again. Foul was on Fox. Weber outside. All Lakers under the boards. And it's Kobe's rebound. Two perimeter shots. You think you'd want to go inside against Los Angeles? Their vaunted world championship defense, not what it used to be. Shaq down low, comes right back to Fisher. They play catch on the left side. There's a double team. Walker's open. Way short, air ball. Here comes Sacramento. Something in transition. Pace. Sacramento up and down. Page is playing with a very sore foot. The plantar fasciitis plaguing him. Page in the paint. Nice lay. Los Angeles come right back now and attack Page. Run that foot. Make it burn. Walker. That time. It's through in the paint. Chris Weber can't get too casual or relaxed on offense. Samaki Walker uh, is a very good offensive player when he's got the rhythm and the groove. Dojakovic again over Fox. Kobe Bryant second rebound. Here come the Lakers. Kobe pull up jumper. Got That's like following the biggest diesel truck down the freeway on the 405, just clearing your way. That's drafted. <laughs> I know nothing about car racing, and that's drafted. Uh, Lance Armstrong, bicycle race. <laughs> Same thing, though, right? Kobe, another rebound. Three straight for him. Christie has his hands full today. Kobe's ready. I like the white uniform. I do, too. Christie and Kobe, a little bumpy. A couple words. Kobe Bryant does a very nice job of just running right up the backside of Shaquille O'Neal. I never saw anyone better in the history of basketball than that than Pete Maravich, who would use all nine players on the court. His teammates and opponents as well. Kobe again. Just inside the three-point line. You're right, Bill. He's ready. Where, where's the offense for Sacramento right now? This is a uh, high-powered, high-octane squad. It just seems to be out of sync with rhythm. Bibby trying to stop a six on run. Nobody can stop Kobe Bryant. He's all over the glass and on the offensive end. Maybe a bit intimidated. Fox playing it off the front. Rarely have we seen a regular season game with this sort of tension, this sort of anticipation. Weber, only the second time he's touched it, and this time it's good. Great players, franchise-level players, the way you get your team going on the road, taking it to the hoop, get to the free-throw line. Chris Weber, 20 and 10 each night out the last four games. Unfortunately, two of them have been lost. Fox got his man in the air, got an open look, but didn't get the roll. Lakers ball out of bounds. Jack, very active, up and down the floor. Hasn't done much productivity-wise in the stat sheet, but just the way he's moving, you can sense that this is a team with greater resolve, the Los Angeles Lakers at this point. Fisher in his opening shot. This one rimmed out. Weber will drop it off for Bibby. This is only the fourth game back for Mike Bibby. He missed 27 games after foot surgery in mid-October. Trying to get a goal to Vonnie Divac, who 
50 with a steal. When Shaq doesn't come, you have to take your own shot, Mike Bibby. Walker underneath. And he walked with it. Terrific slap down defense by Sacramento. Bill Jackson on the left, Rick Adelman on the right. Bill Jackson, who's been part of nine of the last 12 NBA championships. That's a pretty good run. That's not bad. And Fox and Bibby get tangled up again. The second on Rick Fox. As Bibby works his way back in, and remember, this is a team that Bobby Jackson looks on uh, anxiously, desperately trying to get back into that action. Devin George checks in for Rick Fox. Rick Fox gets a big ovation as he heads to the bench. The pregame introductions, the fans were cheering, yelling, screaming for Rick Fox and booing, taunting Doug Christie. Bibby had a nice backdoor cut, got the feed, but was fouled. And Fisher picks this one up. This Laker crowd is ready. They don't like the shot that everyone has been taking at their team. The piling on as the Lakers have struggled out of the gate here. 11 and 18. Only two games in the win column over the Golden State Warriors. They were 19 and 9 this time a year ago. And Bibby misses a free throw. And everything that Bibby does wrong, they will cheer as well. Bibby was sensational last year in the playoffs against the Lakers. By the end of that series, Mike Bibby was the only king that was playing any kind of ball whatsoever. You can decide which players will be All-Star starters. Log on to NBA.com and cast your ballot for the 2003 All-Star game. Shaq's first bucket. The kind of shot you force Shaq to take if he's making that. You have to live with it. You get it back on the offensive end. Bibby behind a Weber screen. A little bit short. Weber got it back. Get your hands up on the rebound, please. Chris will take it himself, and Walker snaps the rebound down with seven minutes to go first quarter. What an awful start in the offensive end for Sacramento. Two for ten. Yikes. Devin George. Got it. Devin George so much expected of him. Resigned him in the offseason. Big free agent contract, but been slow this year by his brain ankle, which he tweaked once again. Missed the last game at Toronto Sunday. Here he is defensively against Doyakovic. John the Fane, what a shot. Wow. <laughs> Doyakovic has four. Not much you can do defensively against something like that. The best shooter in the league steps away from the hoop after seven dribbles, please. Bryant, double teamed. Weber picked his pocket. Gives it up to Christie. And Christie's fouled by George going up. A sign of frustration and disappointment for Sacramento. They turn a two on nothing break into getting caught by a guy with a bad ankle, and Rick Adelman can only look on in dismay. The step out by Chris Weber. The quick hands, very nice. Chris Weber playing with a very pain, painful right hand. Heavily bandaged. Doug Christie hits the first free throw, his first points of the night. Guess it's still afternoon here. It'll be nice time shortly. And if you're sitting in a snowdrift back in the east, it's nighttime and it's very white. We understand that. It's been a beautiful few days here. Is it, it still Christmas? <laughs> I think so. Shaq. Walker tried to tip it up there. Stojakovic with a rebound. Weber has to gobble up that defensive rebound. That's how you set control of the tempo with this team. Stojakovic again. Missed the three. And Shaquille O'Neal tracks down a rebound. Roddy has not been a factor yet. Barely touched it. Not a good sign. And they steal it from Kobe Bryant for the second time. George trying to get back on Weber. He leaves it for Stojakovic for the layup. Two beautiful passes by Chris Weber in transition. How fast is Devin George able to retreat? Not fast enough. Well, Kings are back to within two. Maybe some of the other Lakers could take a tip from him about running back on the defensive end. O'Neal will go to the free throw line. Five minutes and six seconds. What was once an eight-point lead 
for the Lakers has been sliced down to two. Kobe Bryant was hot early, but they have had his number, stolen it from him the last two trips. Sacramento cuts the Laker lead to two. Weber doesn't take kindly to that. Before the game, he told me that uh, he talked to Doug Christie about being ready for what the Lakers are going to try to do to them physically. He said that Fox knows what 99% about it of NBA players think about him and what he and how he plays, and that he, Fox, should just be quiet. When you get beat up, Chris said, you should just be quiet, fellas. Oh man, <laughs> the time for talk in Sacramento is over. Time to start winning some of these games. Last year. Three to one LA in the regular season, seventh game overtime victory by the Lakers at Arco. The Lakers coming into this game are standing on the edge of a cliff. Bill, so, one, Bill, one thing that that, that uh, Weber did say, and, and to add on to that, is that he would gladly trade a win tonight for a championship in June, and that that's what he is most concerned about. So that whether or not they win tonight or or don't, their main goal is still to win a championship, and that's what his focus is. Was that poll conducted by Charles Oakley? <laughs> <laughs> now the Lakers have won 18 of the last 23 between these two teams. Here's a backdoor cut by Billy. Beautiful pass by Diva. That is so nice, and that's why Sacramento, of any team in the league, has the best chance of upsetting the world champions because Vlade can do things like that and make Shaq guard them away from the hoop. George behind Walker got a shot over Weber. That's a heat check for Devin George. Why hasn't Shaq touched the ball? Finally does. Works to the baseline into a double team, and that's Fisher that's open. Got it. There is Fisher, who we talked to back by the locker room before the game, and he wished us a Merry Christmas. I love what you said. Asked him what his health was like. But then he just said, well, I got a bruised hip, I got a thigh contusion, and I said, well, sounds like you're 37% of the way through the NBA season. Exactly. <laughs> Coming up Saturday, January 4th, we'll be in Dallas to see two of the NBA's brightest stars showdown in the heart of Texas. Dirk Nowitzki and Allen Iverson squaring off. The Sixers and Mavs coverage starts Saturday, January 4th, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. The NBA on ABC, we got hoops. A no mention of Steve Nash. He's your favorite player. I know Sean Elliott can't stand him. He doesn't even think he's one of the top five point guards in the entire NBA. I think Steve Nash... He's the most exciting and entertaining player in the entire league right now. I'm, I'm shaded towards you. I enjoy watching him play myself. Weber hit the first of two. Can you please call Sean and, and bring him into the 21st that. century? He and Brent are still stuck in a snowdrift someplace right now. Otherwise, we'd be able to get a hold of him. Weber has four. And the lead, again, cut down to two. Sacramento has not played their game yet, and they trail by two. That can be their only redeeming factor at this point in the game. Kobe Bryant looking for a screen from Shaquille O'Neal. Shoot a jumper, Shaq. Come on. Five on the shot clock. Somebody's going to have to shoot a jumper. Here it comes. Nope. There it went. Bryant's fouled by Christie. Shaq's encouraged to shoot the jumper from the corner of the key there. All but three of Shaq's field goals this season have come from inside the paint. Averaging 19 and a half points per game inside the paint. Far and away the highest in the league. Next highest, Tim Duncan. Almost 13 points a game in the paint. Take it inside and throw it down, big man. Come on. Kobe Bryant kind of trying to shake that shooting hand that he was fouled on as he's going to finally step up to the free throw line. Bobby Jackson will come in as Christie goes out with two fouls. Jackson, of course, the starting point guard for this team in Mike Bibby's absence, and he's been nothing short of being an all-star himself, almost. Did not make the all-star ballot. Most teams get six qualifying players for that ballot. That would make him the number one write-in if there was going to be a write-in situation. But did Kobe hurt his hand? Pinned in the corner. Trapped by Christie. Nah, he's all right. Is there a more positive or more optimistic person in the NBA than Kobe Bryant? I don't think so. He's always upbeat. He always looks at the bright side of things. He's put his team up now by four as we approach three and a half minutes first half. Weber, nice spin inside against Orr. 
beautiful basketball. Dump it into the post with a quick post entry pass. Split, you got a fabulous passer in Chris Weber. And then when that doesn't materialize, he goes to work one on one in the low box. Let's see if Shaquille goes to work. He'll take it back outside to Kobe Bryant on the fade of the baseline. Eight for Kobe Bryant. Matches his uniform number and gives his team a four-point lead. Bobby Jackson, like everybody else, has such an extreme disadvantage. The degree of difficulty in Kobe's shots. Bibby. Bibby with five. The Lakers giving up penetration, something they never used to do during the championship run. But this guy, Mike Bibby, I can argue for him as the league best point guard. Well, a guy that played earlier this afternoon would have something to say about that. <laughs> Jason couldn't even get one game against the Lakers. Maybe he got three of them. Great drive by Stojakovic on the baseline with a reverse lay, and he's the leading scorer for Sacramento with eight, and we're tied at 21. First tie of the ball game. Shaq over line. Still Laker ball. It's not a good sign that Lonnie is having a horrendous night. Usually he starts out pretty good and then fades down the pitch. Right now he hasn't even shown up. Yikes, what are the Kings going to do about it? Yet they're tied. <laughs> How big is your chimney? Not big enough, I know that. <laughs> There's not too many chimneys big enough for that gentleman to come down, but... Uh, Bill oh, Jackson good. feeling that Shaq is rounding into shape at this point right now. The enormous task ahead, though, at this point for the Lakers to just make the playoffs. I don't think that they're going to be able to come in and there against Dallas, against Sacramento, where they will end up in terms of home court advantage. Lakers just want to be healthy and happy come playoff time. Here's Mr. Santa. Got it. Right on cue. Shaquille O'Neal with six. He's moving tonight, and that's always a great sign for the Lakers. What a pass. Great pass. Clark underneath is fouled. And Fisher may have gotten it in the eye on the baseline. He's going to be the guy with the foul, his second. And the man at the line, Keon Clark, along with Jim Jackson. Nice additions. Oh, the new infusion of talent, which has traditionally marked dynasty runs the way that Chicago and it is Rodman and Kukoc. And now Rick Adelman and Jeff Petrie, the Maloofs, they've come in and they've just added these really front-line players who were basically their seventh, eighth, and ninth guys. This is an incredibly deep Sacramento team, which is why they want to keep the pace up. There's part of the Maloof family. Joe is very fired up today. I saw you talking to him before the game. Here's Ori inside. Bobby Jackson with a rebound. Chance for Sacramento to lead, which they have not done. And George is going to try to swipe that from him, but he goes out of bounds in trying to do so. It has to be frustrating and disappointing for the Lakers to play this well and this dominant. And they're up one. One. Bibby against Shaw. Shaw with a steal. Trying to get it to George. What a free ball on the Kobe Bryant. Almost tipped in. Shaq gets a try. Kobe says, let's pull it out. Let's try it again. And then we almost threw it away. He did. That's got to be a foul. That's seven Georges everywhere. He is trying every ball to be his. The floor cam. On Christmas Day at Staples, the size, the strength, the athleticism of the world's greatest athletes on display. The ball was every but, everywhere but on the floor, <laughs> as you can see. And finally, the foul is on Devin George's second. So Stojakovic walks it down the other way at the free throw line. 15th in the NBA as a free throw shooter, 86%. And as you hear him rip it, he's got nine. It's amazing to me that Stojakovic is not... 97, 98 percent from the free throw line. This guy, when you watch him shoot, it's like Yosemite Falls. It's just so beautiful. It's like Mozart on the piano. 
First Sacramento lead, courtesy of Mozart from the free throw line. Shaq trying to give the Lakers the lead back, and he's fouled. Stoyakovich quickly getting in there and alerting him. The referees that it was his foul, not Weber's. Right. Well, you don't want to get Weber or Keon Clark picking up any kind of fouls because Shaq just wears you down. You saw the kid sitting on Shaq's lap saying <laughs> that he wanted to see him go perfect in the free throw line. He's two for two. I tell you what, maybe that kid's what he needs. What a great coach. <laughs> Little kid sitting on Shaquille's lap, and he's three for three from the stripes. Remember one of the great things that the Lakers have done with Shaq since he came over at the free They haven't put the pressure on him about the mystery throws, right? They haven't teased him. They haven't come in with all kinds of gimmick coaches. They just let him work it out. He's become a very good free throw shooter. Bobby Jackson's opening shot's no good. I'm old enough to remember when Shaq couldn't shoot free throws. <laughs> the best he ever did was as a rookie, and that was about 59%. Lakers working around the perimeter. Put the guy behind is yelling, give it to Shaq, give it to Shaq. He might be right. Koyakovic with a rebound off the backside. <laughs> Most the Lakers. <laughs> no fouls to give either way here in the final 20 seconds as Weber drives on Shaquille. Ori clears off the ricochet. Shaq's in transition. King living. Too high for Shaq on the pass from Shaw. Final five. Jackson looking for an opening. Kobe on him. Ori with a steal, but can he get a shot away? <laughs> Great defense by Robert Ory. No statistical impact. Right. Says, wait a minute. And then right at the end of the quarter, talking to Ken Maurer and pleading his case. And that was a foul. That was a foul. Those are the two of the things he said, and <laughs> that was that. There's the technical right at the end of the quarter. I love the selective lip reading. Yeah, I just picked the good spots. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing as Kobe Bryant steps to the free throw line to shoot the technical foul. The kind of play that drives Laker opponents and Laker heaters crazy. That Shaq's out there playing defense. It's an easy play to call. Chris Webber was bumped on the chest on the way up. He hit on the arms. And no foul call whatsoever. Shaquille O'Neal on the bench now to open up the second quarter as our holiday hoops presented by Michelob Ultra continues from Staples Center. Brad Nessler, Bill Walton, David Aldridge, Mike Tirico, Tom Tolbert. Our whole crew here on this Christmas night. And we wish you a very Merry Christmas wherever you may be watching. Good ball game so far. Webber. Oh, he went. Tried to go with authority for a little payback on the technical, and he hit the back of the iron. I forgot to mention Ahmad Rashad. I haven't seen Ahmad yet. I know he's here. <laughs> okay. Ahmad with a great feature. Oh, wasn't that powerful? That was something on our uh, NBA shoot-around on Alonzo Morning. Very nice. I to wonder how much that hand is bothering Chris Webber. That brace uh, cannot be comfortable. He's looking down at it right now. Down the lane, the parting of the Red Sea of the Laker defense with Shaq on the bench. Why not attack the hoop every single time? Really seems to lose the ball on the way to the hoop. Playing fortunately, Keon Clark right on top of it. Jim Jackson in the lineup now. What a terrific addition he has been. The foul was on Bobby Jackson, by the way. Samaki Walker with his second field goal. Lakers named, back and forth. Get to be named Jackson to participate in this game. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a Samaki going if you're with the Lakers. Fourth turnover. Did be still out of sync. And when you first come back, that's the hardest. Your first game back is the easiest. But then it starts to catch up to you physically and you realize how far you have to go to develop. What a move. Quick move by Bryant. No team in the league is better at attacking after getting scored on than the Sacramento Kings. You can't give up penetration if it kills you on your defensive backboard. Jackson into Clark with a finger roll with the left hand. I like Jackson and Bibby up in the backcourt. Force the Lakers to walk it up. This is not a team that's gifted with tremendous ball handlers. Now the Shaq's out of the lineup. The set offense changes dramatically. Here's Kobe Bryant against Bobby Jackson. A mismatch on the baseline. Got it. Oh, the outstretched on the key on Clark. 
First to start calling for the ball down low. Kobe Bryant with 11. Clark with that left hand again and that long wingspan shot trying to come out of the pile, trying to get it ahead to Kobe Bryant and Sacramento got back defensively just enough to break up what would have been a transition break. Holiday Hoops continues Saturday with the premiere of ABC's college basketball. Perennial Powerhouse Kansas takes on Cal, part of the Pete Newell Challenge presented by Allstate. Saturday Live, 3.30 Eastern, 1230 Pacific, right here on ABC. Pete Newell, like Tex Winter, like John Wooden, like Jack Ramsey, have made the game of basketball what it is today. We can never thank those guys on the especially the big guys in Pete's case, right? All players. Because Pete, like Tex, like Wooden, like Ramsey, they teach the game of basketball. It's not specialized. It's not the individual. It's the team game and it's the complete well-rounded package. Lakers by three. Bobby Jackson behind the back pass. Devin, Weber. Devin George is doing it. Bobby Jackson, nice reverse layup. That shows you why he came in averaging almost 20 points a ball game. Since he went to the bench, this is Bibby's fourth game. He's been averaging 29 minutes. So yep. it's, it's not as if they've buried him out there. But this guy deserves to make the All-Star team the way he's played. Hopefully the Western Conference coaches will see fit to, to rectify the travesty of justice there. Shaw just inside the three-point line. And the old veteran with his first field goal. Lakers by three as we approach nine minutes first half. Can't come to a stop. Killing a motion offense here. Jackson to Jackson. That one partially blocked, and Brian Shaw will bring it up to the Lakers. Lakers doing a better job of taking care of their defensive backboard. Oh, that's almost the spot. He hit that three in the playoffs last year, but he gave it up. He's got a little problem with his hand, and he has been giving up some shots. Well, Phil Jackson, no one is coaching the ball. He's one of the shooting more. Kobe Bryant. Got his own missed back, and now a pile up underneath. And every time you see a pile up, you're going to see some officials in that pile in a hurry for these two teams. And no harm, no foul. With 8.35 remaining in the half, Kobe Bryant has led the way for the Lakers. He's had the eye throughout the game. 11 points leads the way. Lakers by three. Five left first half. Lakers should control this. Smokey Monkey Walker cannot get out quick to the ball, which he was. Man, inexcusable. A sign of the times for the Lakers. The other teams are getting to the loose ball first. Inexcusable. Bobby Jackson, Jimmy Jackson, Weber, Clark, and Turkle are on the floor. Uh, Weber wanted the wraparounds behind the back. Clark got a fade. He's had a nice second quarter since coming off the bench. It's a phenomenal addition. I yep. can't believe Toronto just said goodbye. We don't want you. We can't use you. He scored over 11 points a game and had almost eight rebounds a game at Toronto last year. And then when you add Jimmy Jackson, another score, as Bill mentioned earlier, that's firepower, boy, that you just added to the group. Yeah, so Bill, uh, Bill, the reason Toronto let him go is the reason that happens a lot in this league. Luxury tax, salary cap. They did not want to go past the luxury tax, so they couldn't sign a guy like Keanu Clark. Jimmy Jackson just missed the turnaround, the other guy we were talking about. Sacramento's paying the mid-level exception of four and a half million. Nice exception, huh? George for three. Got it. The perimeter players, the bench guys are delivering for Phil Jackson. He wanted bench production, he's getting it from Devin George and Brian Shaw. Samaki Walker's been solid. Sacramento has not been able to attack. Turkaloo over Shaw. Tough shot. Shaw with a rebound. And looking to push it. I love Brian Shaw. What a point. Kobe. <laughs> Foul by Clark. Guys like Shaw, Rick Fox, Robert Ory, you love to play with those guys. They think the game of basketball. They're a lot like Yao Ming. Be there in Times Square with Dick Clark.
three and a half hours of music mayhem and more. Dick Clark's New Year's <laughs> Rock and Eve. And I know Bill and David and Mike and Tom, they'll all be right in the thick of it, because that's right about where the hotel is. Tuesday night, starting at 10, 9, 9 Central on ABC. Have fun there, partner. We're promoting mayhem? Yeah, mayhem. <laughs> mayhem in the PM. Wait a minute. You're not going to be there? How I'm going to be in New there Orleans. be an NBA game without Brad Nestor? I've I don't got, understand that. I've got my own mayhem in New going? Orleans, the Sugar Bowl. What's that? Well, that's a big football game right here on ABC. This is the NBA. I know you'll be watching because you don't want to be out in that crowd. I'll be at church. That's good. I prayed for you this morning, by the way. 36, 32 Lakers. <laughs> I don't know if you spent enough time. I wasn't there long enough, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Vlade finally his first bucket of the night. Well in to the second quarter. Cuts the Lakers lead to a deuce. Now come right back to Shaq and try to pick up some fouls on Vlade. Kobe Bryant from 15. <laughs> this guy's at a different level than everybody else. Good to see Tracy McGrady come back to life. So after 10 days out with the bad back, Tracy had a big game earlier today at 40. Kobe with the steal the other way. Shaq finally touches it. Kick out the hole and wide open. The crowd's been waiting for that one. Laker basketball. Dump it inside. Move on the perimeter. Shaq, a great passer. Delivers it out in order to knock him down with the best of them. Blocking foul on Kobe Bryant. Lottie Dibach says, did you see his reaction to the foul call? He's trying to work for a later call, maybe. Lottie, a former Laker, knows what it's about here. 41-34. Kobe Bryant's led the way, but shades of last year's playoffs. Ori, long ball. Lakers with a lead. So many great laughs that he's provided us with and uh, more on the way in a couple of weeks. Right now, we're just getting cheers, though, from the Sacramento Kings. He didn't take advantage when Shaq was out of the lineup. Now he's back. Jimmy Jackson, his first basket. If you're the Lakers, right into Shaq now. You got Ori hot from the three-point line. There it is. The in pass from Fox and the foul immediately. Shaq is moving and Vlade, like the rest of the world, is helpless at this point when he's playing like that. Clark picks up the foul. And with the perimeter players for Los Angeles stroking the jumpers, it brings out the defensive backcourt for Sacramento, and there's nothing you can do about it. All the timeouts, all the strategy, all the fridge, and Kobe Bryant getting a well-deserved rest, although this is the kind of game you can just feel from when we talked yeah. to him today that he, he wanted 48. He did, he did, for sure. <laughs> but enough of this rats. We haven't played since Sunday night. 24 years old and Kobe Bryant with a new baby. Due on February, just prior to the All-Star break. Congratulations, Kobe, and Merry Christmas. He is looking forward to that. He is fifth in the league, by the way, and then it's played right at 42 a game. Shaquille O'Neal is five of six from the free throw line. Bobby Jackson, he can shoot with anybody. The strategy, though, so evident for Sacramento. Attack Shaq, involve him in screen and roll defense every time. Sold out Staples Center here on this Christmas night. And the Lakers, it's not the first time they've played on Christmas since their move from Minneapolis 42 years ago. They have played 28 games on Christmas Day. They've been 10 and 3 at home on those Christmas Day ball games. Shaq, the third leading career score of active players on Christmas Day behind. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Oscar Robertson, the career leader overall. It's good company. Ori hit his last three from there. This one rims out. All of those players on the NBA's all-time team was announced in 97. And a foul. The college football celebration we've got for you New Year's Day on ABC at 1 o'clock. Penn State and Auburn get together at the Capital One Bowl at 4.30. It's... Washington State and Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl presented by PlayStation 2 at 8.30 Eastern SEC champion Georgia takes on Florida State in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and I'll be there. All kicks off at 11 a.m. Eastern for the Tournament of Roses Parade New Year's Day on ABC Sports. And that's where you're going to be? That's where I'm going to be. I don't understand. Somebody's going to have to fill me in on this. <laughs> you got to talk to my travel agent. Or our stat man, Pat McGrath. He always knows where I am. Supposed to be in New York. O'Neal over Lottie Divac. And the rebound is Weber's. With Mayhem. With Dick Clark. 
you're passing on that body. And a foul on Ori. Vlade, at his best, can be so effective against Shaq. His ability to run the floor and ability to handle the ball, put it on the deck and get to the hoop. But if he's going to play a passive, reactive game, the way the Lakers have been playing most of this season, I'm not sure what good he's going to do, Rick Allen. Kobe Bryant checking back in after Bill said a much-deserved rest. He's a leading scorer in the ballgame. Rick Adelman, every year, his team has been better. 27 wins his first year, then 44, then 55, and then 61 last season as they won their first ever Pacific title. It's not as if Sacramento should be tired. They haven't played since Sunday night, and that game was against Golden State, which was basically over before it even started. That was sort of a cakewalk on 0388. They lost their two prior games on Thursday and Friday. San Antonio and Phoenix. Phoenix fans much better. Are well, they ever? Fox. And that one's up and over the backboard. But home court advantage is such an edge on Christmas Day. You got a built-in excuse for the visitors. And whining and complaining. Oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be away from my family. Oh, it's just a calendar day for basketball players. Just get out and get to work here. Jackson waited behind Weber and then delivered. Seven off the bench for Bobby Jackson. Where would the King be without Bobby Jackson? Shaq puts his shoulder into Lottie and over the top off the glass. Nice recovery of the balance by the big man. Vlade seemed to be run over by the bus. Nobody picked up Stoyakovic. They finally do, but it's too late. They're hoping Stoyakovic can get healthy. Tough injury, plantar fasciitis, to play through. He's had a good ball game, five of seven from the floor. The Sacramento's upcoming schedule is very demanding, unlike the Lakers. What a rebound! Kobe Bryant, actually he was shot out of a cannon, but he missed the reverse layup. Jackson all the way. Over Shaq! <laughs> uh, do you think Rick Adelman ever lies awake at night and wondering, wondering, should I put him in, in the closing minutes of Game 7 at Arco a year ago? Second lead of the ball game for Sacramento on that Jackson shot over Shaq. Double team on Shaquille, and he throws it away. So defense a factor against Shaquille. Jackson thought about it. Stoyakovich won't even think twice, but he missed a three. Wonderful box out, Kobe Bryant. Kept the bigger, more powerful Chris Weber off the glass. Kobe Bryant with seven rebounds. And driving to the hoop. Drew the foul. Vlade picks up the foul here. Second on the night. You do not want to pick up fouls on other people when you're guarding Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille with a little body English. And then up and off the glass English. But his team right now trailing 46-45 to Sacramento. And who they desperately need, Bobby Jackson, because he adds that level of mental toughness that the Sacramento Kings have been missing as they push toward what they hope will one day be a championship. But this guy believes that he's the best player in the game. And he plays with that level of confidence, the swagger, the sense that he can just go right at Shaq, go right at Kobe and take it to him. Too many other players look at the, the great stars and they cower. And they say, I don't want any part of those guys. Bobby Jackson, who's got nine points this quarter, mm -hmm. is the exact opposite. And he's helped Sacramento to a 16-10 advantage bench-wise over the Lakers. Kobe with 14. And he's been on the boards as well. Eight rebounds. But they went away from Kobe. Yeah. And things sort of got out of hand for the Lakers. And they've allowed through their own carelessness and, and lack of execution of the offensive end, Sacramento to come right in. You talk about the triangle offense, and Phil Jackson was telling us before the game that those guys, Jack and Kobe, can do so much on raw ability that they get away from the system sometimes and the other guys don't get their shots or their points. This team is built. Beautiful block. And then he got hit in the face at the end of that. <laughs> How is that not a traveling violation? But Fox, Ori, 
Derek Fisher, Brian Shaw, they're all the complimentary players. Terrific read defensively by Doug Christie. He had that reverse plan the whole way. Doug Christie, the only all-defensive player in the history of the franchise here for Sacramento. And Christie's fouled by Kobe Bryant. That's the second on Kobe. But one of the criticisms that the Lakers are facing right now is that they just have no infusion of new talent, no, no spark who can come and provide that enthusiastic drive to the top to keep them on edge. Stojakovic missed outside. The Lakers, it's been four years since they've had a mid-season trade to try to add somebody that would spark them offensively. And of course, the money problems is a big part of it. And they might have to buy the rim after that one. Throw it down, big man. Throw it down. Lakers back in front by three. But who are they going to get? Whoever the rest of the league doesn't want these guys. And hopefully the rest of the league is not acting as a farm club for the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers. But the Kings can add somebody like Jimmy Jackson. There's offense. Fisher. Missed his... Missed his, uh, made his first shot, I should say, and hasn't hit a three-pointer since. I don't think the Lakers are going to make any more. And why not? They've won three straight. Shaq just rolled. Shaq just threw that one off the glass. <laughs> and he rumbles down court, looking to the crowd. He'll be trying to tip it in. Kobe Bryant's ninth rebound. Final half minute of the half. The kick out. Fisher takes a look down and in and out. Kobe getting it back. Shaq got it. <laughs> Referees have swallowed their whistles. The Kings are standing around saying, hey, wait a second. <laughs> Ten and a quarter for the big guy, 17 for the game. Kobe Bryant able to steal that ball away from the Kings. When you see a defensive player standing erect with his hands up, that's a sign of concession that you feel on the so deep, so strong. On the second one, able to throw it down, big man. Final five seconds of the half. Bibby, crossover dribble, and Fisher touched him on the way by. And that's three fouls, a cheap third one on Derek Fisher. The crowd at Staples Center is standing, and have been for the last two minutes here. This is a regular season game. They're into it. And why not? This is such good basketball. Such a dynamic personality. These guys who, you know, who are just putting it all out there. Which is why I want to see more from Chris Webber. I want to see more from Vladi Divas. You know, we have not had it. Weber's got the quietest 10 points you could ever see in the first half. And we were talking last week on what an incredible role he has been on. But that's why you want to put Bobby Jackson's heart and soul in some of these other guys' bodies. Bibby at the line. We wondered if floor camp could take Shaq. He missed the first one. He's going to land just about on it after the second try. Boom. Three point nine seconds remaining in the half. Bibby's got another free throw. The Lakers have actually been out rebounded 15 times this year, and they've won only two games in that 15 game stretch. They're up 12 boards in this game right now, and that's helping their cause. Rebounding is a result of your defense. And this is one of the best Lakers defensive efforts that I've seen all season. This year, through traffic, good if it goes, oh, just off the mark. A good intense first half. Western Conference rivals haven't had it at halftime. The Lakers holding their home court, but not by much. Kobe Bryant led the way, 15 points, 12 rebounds. And let's check in with D.A. courtside. Kobe, it's hard not to sense the emotion in this building tonight. How are you guys using that emotion? How's it feeding in the first half? No, we just, you know, we're using that to our benefit as far as playing in our rhythm and really playing hard. You know, this is a big game for us. Uh, and we've been playing pretty well, this, you know, this first half. We just have to keep it up. Phil Jackson said he was going to make changes in the lineup to get more energy on the floor, put some hockey in the starting lineup tonight. Did you notice that? Well, we've tried pretty much every starting lineup we thought to see. <laughs> you know, so Mike came out to start the game, gave us good energy. I think as a whole, we played pretty well to start the game, and that's usually been our weakness. Is this game more important to you than it is to Sacramento because of where you are right now? Yeah, 
it's really not important. I mean, for us, every game is important right now. We're really faced with an uphill battle, so every game is like a Sacramento at this point. Well, you're doing pretty good against this guy. in this game. Well, somebody ought to whack him in the back before each game if he's going to say he's questionable to go because he went off for big numbers today. And you see, just doing it. His game is so complete. Inside, outside, he's just an all-around great player. He scored 46, fifth highest by... Ah, oh, Sean Kemp changed the me. <laughs> ben Wallace, the leading rebounder in the league, had nine, bounced back from an injury. Late down the stretch, Darryl Armstrong needed to hit a big hoop. Didn't call glass, but it didn't matter. The Magic won by five, so the Pistons now slide a game and a half behind Detroit in the uh, NBA Central Division. As for this game, Tom... Center. Bibby, Stojakovic, Weber, Lonnie Divac, and Christie starting five on the floor. Fisher comes up with a steal to open things up. Not a good start. Over dribbling by Sacramento. One of the problems that the Kings are facing is that they can't attack Kobe Bryant through Doug Christie. Kobe Bryant just gets to rest and roll on defense, and then he's fresh on the offensive end. Kobe over Christie, short. Rick Fox kept it alive. Kobe kept it in the hole, 17 for Kobe Bryant. Everybody mentioned it. Tom Tolbert, David Aldridge, offensive rebound. You're never going to beat the world champion unless you control the board. Weber got his own miss. He tries to spin inside, runs into Shaq. A lot of time, reset something, get something perfect. Stojakovic, high floater over O'Neal. Tease him, Peja. Look at the big guy, freeze him. Stay, stay down. 14 to lead the way for the Kings for Stojakovic. Fox on a cut through the lane. And drew a foul. Rick has not scored in the ball game. Has an opportunity now from the free throw line. Peja Stojakovic battling through the plantar fasciitis, able to take Fox off the dribble. Historically, Fox has killed Peja Stojakovic. Stojakovic has never been able to really get on track and control the game. But you can never underestimate the number of games, the length of the season that these Lakers have played the last three runs. When you talk to the Chicago Bulls, when you talk to the Boston Celtics teams who have been involved in these incredible dynasties, they say that you're just worn out on a constant basis. Bibby for three. And the rebound, Evox. Trying to work against Shaq. Not Try to play down the baseline, and that's no dice there. He's got to go for the sky hook in that situation. On the other end, Shaq had to make a tough catch and couldn't quite do it. See, Vladdy's really struggling, and he's got to find a way to get out of it. Transition hoops, give and goes, get to the offensive glass, set some screens away from the ball, get active, get moving. You're not going to be productive against Shaq in a stand-there, toe-to-toe matchup. Weber rimmed it out of the baseline, and Walker with a rebound. Kings are conceding the offensive glass. They're just retreating softly on the perimeter jumpers. There's nothing but white jerseys when they shoot. Kobe, the bounce inside the shaft. One more pass to Walker. Good look by Shaquille O'Neal. Sacramento gave the Lakers life in game four a year ago when Ori hit the big jumper at the buzzer. Are they doing it for the rest of the league here tonight? Fox going to pick up the foul. It'll be his third. The beauty of the triangle. Kobe Bryant, the quick hitting attack. Always on the move. To dump it down and then Shaquille O'Neal with everyone collapsing. You should lead the league in offensive rebounding if you're a front court player teamed up with Shaquille O'Neal. There's the finish from floor cam by Samaki Walker on the extra pass from Shaquille O'Neal. So Yakovic is perfect from the free throw line and leads the way with 16 for Sacramento. Wouldn't have worked for Dennis Rodman as a Laker if Phil Jackson was the coach at the time. There's a loaded question. <laughs> and Kobe Bryant is fouled by Weber. Everything is going L.A.'s way right now. 
They're getting to the free throw line. They're controlling both ends of the boards. Kobe Bryant having the time of his life, taking whatever he wants. What People, a way to spend Christmas, huh? Not bad. It's nice up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely nice up there. Th that is a, a cool spot. Kobe's got 18. I believe when we were on the Love It Live tour last year, we we called that place the Job of the Hut Lounge. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of everything in there. Oh, Very more, colorful crowd. More than a little bit. Uh huh. Kobe Bryant's got 19. Eight-point lead again. Just over nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Shaq has played over 22 minutes, Bill. No foul. Pretty good, huh? They're not attacking him. Exactly. Lot is settling for the perimeter game. Confusion here. Shaq needs is going to pull the guys together. Ken Mauer, Ronald Eziak, try to straighten things out. Fortunately, the voice of reason is Jack Neese. They're going to jump it up here. Not too much reaction from either coach. We get another look. That's got to be Laker ball. It sure looked like it. Well, if you're having trouble, you borrow my glasses. No, I, don't, I can't see through those things. You never clean them. <laughs> so we'll jump it. And the Kings get the ball. Do you think some of the Laker problems might be associated with the fact that Phil Jackson is now clean-shaven? You said that the whole uh, clean-shaven look. No power spot, no mustache. I'd be concerned. There might need to be a regrowth. <laughs> Beautiful post-entry pass box. The big guy. Short-armed it a little bit, and that's why he's fouled. Third foul. A lot of bucks. Sacramento's not scoring. They have no offensive rhythm whatsoever. They seem to be a dead team. Tom Colbert was talking about how charged up and psyched up they, they are. I don't see it. They're one for six this quarter from the floor so far. And they trail by eight. Shaq can give the Lakers their biggest lead of the night if he hits the free throw. He's done a good job from there. That's only his second miss in seven tries. Is Sacramento going to be the type of team like the Pistons in the late 80s that eventually became champions? First, you got to get to that one plateau, and then... Well, they battled the, the Celtics and then the Lakers. Right. And then, while the Pistons were champions, the Bulls and Michael and Scotty were coming up. But can Sacramento duplicate that, or will they just be a, always the bridesmaid? Foul's going to be on Shaq. That's his first. So we just talked about the fact that he played this many minutes and not... Picked up a foul, and that one was trying to go for a loose ball on the floor. The history of the NBA has always been the guys who hit first get the fewest number of calls against them. Here's Rick Fox stealing a break. And a, lead. And a chance for a three-point play. And that play is a classic example of why you don't make the kind of statement that Chris Webber made at the top of the show about Rick Buck, who was an outstanding person, an outstanding basketball player, a class guy on and off the court, a three-time world champion, Rick Fox, who has turned down so many dollars just to stay part of this great Laker organization because he wanted to be part of the best. He learned about that from Dean Smith in North Carolina, and he has stayed true to his commitments the rest of his life. Puts his team up by 12, but it goes right back to 10 as Bibby just rips the jumper, his first points of the second half. Rick Fox, all his scoring has come this quarter. Here's Walker looking for a foul, didn't get it. Soyakovic, the runner is snapped out of here by Brown. <laughs> Fox again. And Lonnie Divac pulls it off the backside. Finally a stop for Sacramento. Now can they get something on the offensive end? Bibby trying to pick up the Kings pace. Bryant saved it. And a foul. 
And now the Kings are starting to look to the referees to help them and bail them out. They might need to go to Bobby Jackson quickly. Mike Bibby is not sharp enough to play at this level, having only played in this his fourth game of the NBA season due to the stress fracture in the operation. Log on to NBA.com for an exclusive gallery of photos featuring NBA players spreading the holiday spirit throughout their communities. Timeout. Sacramento. Everybody up to Staples Center. As the Lakers. A little bit of uh, brotherly love here for the holidays. There always hasn't been that way so far this year for the 11 and 18 Lakers, but they're playing much better than that right now. They lead with 7 minutes, 26 seconds remaining in the quarter. And the defending champions playing defense, playing offense. Kobe's playing all over the place. The Lakers up 10. Problems that the Lakers have gone through this year. Phil Jackson, brilliant. Fisher at the free throw line. And this is the first. I asked Phil before the game, I said, do you even bring up the last time these two teams met in the preseason when there was the fight? And I, I didn't get the question in my mouth. I said, absolutely not. I didn't say anything about it. Fisher got the second. Six for Derek. Phil, you know, Brian Shaw also was very public in saying, hey, Shaq, Kobe, you guys can't keep ripping us every time we make a mistake. We're your teammates. So the players had something to say about that as well as Phil. And, and give credit to Brian Shaw to stand up to, to the two, two superstars because uh, some guys in tough situations would say that and they'd be waved the next day. Oh, my goodness. Stojakovic had to hoist one with three seconds left on the shot clock, and he buries a three. But well, Brian's the, been around 14 years. He has uh, earned his stripes enough to say whatever he wants to his teammates, I think, and uh, good advice. The stability of the Los Angeles Lakers franchise to be able to withstand the tough times and realizing that it's not about just a, any two-month period of time. Christie just having a, a world of trouble with Kobe Bryant today. And he picks up another foul as well. January 4th will be in Dallas to see two pretty exciting teams. One that ripped off 14 straight to start the season. The other one's got Allen Iverson. Sixers and Mavs coverage starts Saturday, January 4th, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. The NBA on ABC, we got hoops. Isn't that traveling on dirt? I mean, <laughs> when it comes down the lane like that, and I'm looking forward to Steve Nash head-to-head -head against Allen Iverson. That'll, That'll be fun. That's going to be terrific. Eric Snow, Aaron McKee playing good ball. That'll Always be another. Fun. And in the matchup, Larry Brown, Don Nelson. Oh, yeah. Another electric matchup uh, we'll have. There'll be some intensity in that one as Kobe Bryant drops in both free throws, and the lead is back to 10. Because Dallas believes in themselves, I think. They do. And what I'm watching right out here tonight, I don't know if Sacramento believes. Beautiful screen, Christie. Seems to be some doubt. Weber's been very quiet. That's his first points of the second half, 12 for the game. You know, are the Lakers going to wear these white uniforms every game from now on? I have no idea, but I like them. We do have two teams with purple, and on Sunday home games, we understand that's what the Lakers are wearing. Fisher with the shot outside. Weber will try again. And Shaq went up some authority. He hit the board, and now he's running the floor. The big man is rumbling. Get him the ball when he's on the move. Kobe trying to dish it inside. They're going to call a foul on Kobe. That's his third. I believe he's on a three second, second, second call. Second uh, part. Samaki Walker has set up camp. Sacramento's got to come alive here. They haven't come to Bobby Jackson. The patience of Rick Adelman. Weber again. He's missed the last two from the same spot. Fox with the rebound. The closing games, particularly five and six, Weber was very strong with that move. Been non-existent tonight. There's only one for six this quarter from the floor. Eight on the shot clock. Shaquille, a little too strong off the back. The rebound is Christie. Christie all the way. And there's the Christie Fox matchup. And the foul on Rick Fox. That's four on Rick. So Doug has been uh, awfully quiet. His wife looking on. He's got two free throws to show for his performance tonight. Thank you. 
Rick was sick with four fouls. Doug Christie has had some very solid performances this year. But his ability to hit the outside shot, which is not the strength of the team, he's shooting a high 30 from three-point land, right? But he's got to knock it down to, because he's not going to give you much of the mid-range. He hasn't taken a field goal in 19 minutes of play. So the three free throws out of four attempts from the line is all Christie's shown. Stojakovic just inside the three-point line. He's been the guy, but it hasn't been quite enough. Cuts the lead to seven. And he's doing it all by himself. And then he... He's having to do it, coming to a dead stop each and every time. The Laker defense has dug in. And Shaq is just picking guys apart with beautiful passing. Kobe through traffic. Wow. <laughs> That's a tough shot. Divides the outlet to Christie. This might be a field goal attempt. It is. Chance for a three-point play, in fact. Devin George trying to get to him. Picks up his third. Finally something easy. Finally a, a solid, strong defensive rebound after a wild shot here by Cody. And as well as Cody's been playing, fortunately they're able to get it over the top. And Devin George just misread his defensive stab. Lotte, one of the top passers at any position, especially as a center with the outlet, and Christie does cap the three-point play. Closing the gap down to four. Sacramento, six straight points to make it 70-66. Shaquille O'Neal. A little wild on the hook. Fans were looking for a foul call, so is he. Sacramento can cut further into the Laker advantage. If you're Sacramento, you don't want to get into a stand around. It's got to be wide open. The Lakers have completely controlled the tempo throughout. Bibby, three. Got it now. That's the Mike Bibby from the Western Conference Finals a year ago. Fortune Bill Jackson to call a timeout in his once seemingly insurmountable lead it by Los Angeles has been cut to one. 65 to 53 just moments ago, and now it's a one-point ball game. Lakers try to hang on. 344 to go in the third. Beating the post. One of the league's best maybe in history. And Ori. The five. First time, everybody squares off a little bit. Chris Robertson, what's the big deal? It's a hard play, a hard foul. It was that matchup. Game six of last year's Western Conference. Where Weber was just having a monster game. Or he was able to take it out of him down the stretch. Here's Weber trying to wrap around there. Ori with tough foul and then a uh, little bit of staring. No talking. And the officials quickly in there. When you're a great player, you're going to get him. And you got to be able to walk away and accept that. And get it at the free throw line. Let your game do your talking. And then get some goon in there to, just to, to take care of business for you. Weber could give the Kings their first lead of the half. And does. It's Sacramento 71, the Lakers 70. But Robert Ory, in no stretch of any imagination, could be considered a dirty or illegal player. Shaq got it back and got fouled. Rick Adelman calling for a traveling violation. <laughs> Beautiful post-entry pass, Shaq on the move in deep. And that is a traveling violation. A little bunny hop, got two feet on the move. Never really established any sort of stop. I just can't imagine Shaq doing the bunny hop. He hits the free throw. Shaq is very light on his feet. And that's one of, the main, one of the things that makes him so remarkable. Chris Weber right on top of the traveling call. Rod is saying, what's up here? Jack's free throw snaps an 11-0 run by Sacramento. Looking for his 20th point to try to give the Lakers the lead back. But you can't come into this building thinking that the referees are going to give you anything. 
thinking that you're going to just win by luck at the end. And that's where Sacramento is really hurting themselves. Shaquille O'Neal, by the way, is shooting 80% from the free throw line. We've got three minutes left in the third quarter. Is that tonight or on the season? That's tonight. Okay. Bibby around a pick. Clark keeps it alive. Bibby's looking much better over these last couple of minutes. He seems to have picked it up a step, that's for sure. He seems to have changed the interpretation of uh, defensive rules. A year ago, that was called an offensive foul at a critical juncture of game six. And still, Bobby Jackson sits. Why? I don't know. You've asked, and now I'm finally asking. <laughs> Weber trying to warm up his corner, which was pretty dry in its own right until the last minute or so. 15 for Chris. And another double-double. He's had double-doubles now in 15 of his last 18 games. Missed the second. And we're tied at 72. Bobby Jackson just got up on the Kings bench to head to the scores table. Finally. Shaquille against Weber. Baseline move. Too strong off the glass and Bibby the rebound. Deep there because Keon Clark has tried for an impossible block, took himself totally out. Wow, this guy's hot. What a shot. And then I got a hot hand. Now great teams milk hot hands, bad teams freeze them out. As everybody tries to get theirs. Can they continue to milk Stoyakovich? He's got 12 in the quarter, 24 for the game. Kobe kicked his own dribble, and Bibby right there to swipe it. Now he gets it back. Stoyakovich, that's the hot hand. Bill's talking about he missed that one. But Weber behind the back. A little too fancy, but he didn't have to be. Don't let the show get in the way of winning the game, please. It is a three-point lead, and that's the biggest so far for Sacramento all afternoon and night long. They're doing a nice job of collapsing on Shaq. George threw some traffic, threw a foul. The foul is number three on Keon Clark. Chris Weber has played pretty well over the last couple of possessions. I'm not sure what he's thinking there at all. Nobody was even guarding him. It was his shot. His to take, and he didn't. So George to the free throw line. He Evan hasn't scored this quarter and still hasn't. Missed the 10 games with the sprained ankle. Was pressed into heavy duty when Rick Fox was suspended for the first six games of the season. Shaq to the bench. Can Sacramento capitalize here? With Shaq down the last 93 seconds. George missed them both, but the Lakers keep it alive. How do you expect to win if you can't get a defensive rebound on a missed free throw with Shaq sitting on the bench? Horry had it knocked away by Christie Jackson trying to get it to him, but George, nice hustle. They're still playing catch. Finally, it's Clark off the Jackson line. That's Sacramento basketball. A contingent of Kings fans here. This is incredible. They didn't say much till now because they're up five. How did they get tickets? Martin Lawrence said he couldn't get tickets. <laughs> Fisher. Weber all alone off the backside for the rebound. It's Sacramento by five under a minute, third quarter. Shoot it, Fisher. Pull the trigger on a three in transition. Break the game open. Christie. Yikes. Missed a three. That's the shot that just has to go down. Kobe Bryant going to work against Stoyakovic. The kick out to Fisher for three. Nope, just inside the line. Just inside for two. Last shot time for Sacramento. They made a remarkable turnaround. Ahead by three, but do they really have control of the game? About a second difference on the shot clock and game clock. As you view it, we wind down the third corner in Los Angeles. Stoyakovich, no foul call. The air ball at Robert Ory coming down. Final seconds, Kobe Bryant. Good, and it goes. Just short. 
Sacramento, they have to be able to get to the free throw line. They've made major improvements. They've cut down the Lakers' offensive rebounding, but they're not able to get to the line themselves, and that's how you control tempo. The Maloof brothers, ecstatic, will they be so? in 12 more minutes. Stojakovic, a huge quarter, 12 points of his 24, and he's given Sacramento the lead at the end of three. Lakers led by four and a half. Now they trail by three. ABC Sports presentation of the NBA on ABC. Continues. But those are wild scramble plays, which work when the Lakers' offense collapses. Now, everybody's jumping up and down and enthusiastic, but as the game becomes discipline as it becomes organized and structured can Sacramento deliver because this Laker team has come to play tonight and now that Shaq's back in to reestablish order we'll just have to see what kind of team Sacramento really has here's Shaquille missed the hook just missed <laughs> Bobby Jackson coming the other way all the way through everybody swatted out of there by Kobe Bryant here's a lot for George for the Lakers. The lead's down to one. Christie, and it's stolen. Chance for the Lakers to lead. That's where you got to go to Weber and Bobby Jackson. Ori, got the three! Lakers back in front by two. Laker fans are treating this like the world championship. Tie game, Weber, a nice move around Ori. 79-79, fourth quarter. Come quickly to Shaq in the shot clock. Run some splits. There's Shaq. Weber on it. Kobe Bryant thinking about it. He'll take it. Way off the mark. Shaquille had a hand on it and was stripped down low. This is very frustrating for Sacramento. They give up a long three by Kobe at one end. But at the other end, Bobby Jackson just gets roofed by Kobe <laughs> Bryant. Devin George out in transition, able to throw it down himself. Robert Ory in transition, stepping right into it. A thing of beauty. The Lakers flowing at the proverbial river. And Shaq draining free throws like Jerry West, the way they used to wear the, the white jerseys back in, in the, the 60s. The first time in 35 years in white uniforms. They will wear them on Sundays at home. Shaq knew he was missing that one. And uh, they called the that one off. Off. Finally. <laughs> and Phil goes, you know what, I think you're right, maybe. <laughs> you might have crossed the line. You might have crossed the line just by about seven feet. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Mark Cuban is arguing? <laughs> One point game, Lakers in front. Wonderful drive. Around Ori again. And you're talking about an exquisite defender in Robert Ori. One of the smartest players to ever play the game. Overmatched physically against almost every opponent he plays against out here in the Western Conference, yet still delivers. Now we see Saw back and forth with 10 minutes to play, fourth quarter. One point Sacramento lead. Six on the shot clock. Back in the shack. And we're going to call a jump ball between Bobby Jackson, I think, and Shaq. And now if they don't get this jump ball, there's something wrong. They're playing the Chris Weber on Shaq and letting Keon Clark guard Robert Ory. Chris Weber with a lot more bulk power. Turning at the length of Keon Clark. Chris was going to try to take the jump ball, and finally they got the right guy in the paint against Shaq. 7-1 against 6-1. Let's see Shaq just dunk it from there on the jump ball. That'd be nice. And now there's a little discussion going on as Kobe Bryant and Doug Christie are trying to get position on the jump circle. And uh, we start doing a few things there. Get the officials cleaned up so we can get the jump ball. Chris Weber's out of position. Well, Shaq got the jump ball. And Bobby Jackson got the ball. Devin George got the foul. That was kind of ugly. Check in with David. You know, guys, you see Gavin and Joe Maloof there, uh, the owners of the team. They wanted to see this game in the worst way, and they wanted to see it courtside. 
They couldn't get courtside seats from the Lakers, so they had to go to other means. They wound up spending $30,000 for four courtside tickets for themselves and their two brothers. Oh, boy. They want to see their team play. You can't say the Maloofs aren't committed, guys. I talked to Gavin a little bit at halftime. I didn't know he was that <laughs> light in the pockets uh, when I talked to him. But that kind of support and commitment is what made the Kings the franchise that they are, why everybody wants to play for them. You talk to every college kid who has a dream of playing in the NBA one day, they all say, I want to be on the Sacramento Kings. Now is on Chris Webber, and he has four. And who would have thought we would ever say that? That's right, that's right. As I said, every year they've gotten better. Rick Adelman now in his fifth year has done a sensational job with them. Last year they had a team record in victories on the road. They went 25 and 16 on the road. Christie, great defensive play. He's trying to go coast to coast, and Shaw's not going to let him. Christie, a couple weeks ago, in a big game at San Antonio, blew the game open. At San Antonio, where the Kings won by 20 points, a very physical play here. The Kings not backing down at all. Kobe trying to hold off Doug Christie. Christie's done most of his work scoring-wise from the free throw line. Rick Fox, four fouls on the Laker bench. Those were the two combatants, of course, in the preseason game that we relived for you throughout the day so far. It's been a little pushing and shoving, but nothing that you wouldn't see in a normal NBA game, so both sides have played it cleanly. Missed opportunity to win on this court. You've got to play perfect. Devin George, big jumper. Four points in this fourth quarter, nine for the game for George, and it's tied at 82. Where are they going to get their dedicated and disciplined offense from? The Kings. And a foul on George on the other end, trying to stay with Jim Jackson. You would think with the, that with the success that Weber had, going head-to-head -head at Ryder Robert Orion, they would come back to Chris Weber in this situation. They've frozen him out. What's going on here? Eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining fourth quarter. Merry Christmas from Los Angeles. We're tied at 82. Head down to New Orleans and Yao Ming in Houston. Weber has had his way with Ori the last couple times down. This time he missed wildly with a hook shot. And the Lakers with the ball and an opportunity to lead. Right now it's Shaw, Fox, Bryant, O'Neal, and Ori on the floor for the Lakers. Fox wisely passing it up against his own defense. He's not losing. He's been sitting for so long. Kobe Bryant got away, got around what looked like a foul by Christie, but there was no call, and then the ball comes loose. Bobby Jackson pull-up jumper got it. Just instant offense. Mental toughness of the Sacramento Kings. Be tested in his next eight minutes of action. Fox got too low on the baseline, has to bring it back on top. Shaw, three. And the rebound is Weber's. Weber's 14 4 Lakers are standing on the precipice. Can anybody push them off? They're teetering, aren't they? Weber got Ori in the air. Nice floater by Chris Weber. If you're Sacramento, keep scoring. Just think points right now. Robert Ori. Struggling, laboring, got the bad hand, got the bad wheels. Still trying to set a pick for Kobe Bryant, but he missed the shot. Shaquille O'Neal went up, could not handle the rebound. Here comes Sacramento again. Beautiful pass, Christie. Long rebound starting to go Sacramento's way. Come back to Chris Weber. Christie drives against Shaw. Fox with a rebound. Or he could barely get up the court. He backs out, gets a pass, and doesn't have enough legs or hand to go up with a three, even though he had a momentary opener. Kobe Bryant, off balance, going to the free throw line. Terrific initial defense by Jim Jackson, who stayed down, used the, the breadth of his shoulders to, to keep Kobe under control initially, but then once he got into the lane, then it was all over. Remember more NBA action this week, tomorrow night on TNT, Detroit and Washington tangle at 7.30, then Toronto at Seattle in the nightcap at 10, and then Friday night on ESPN2, Milwaukee at New Jersey at 8 o'clock. Kobe Bryant missed the 
this is a free throw. New Jersey looks terrific as they are. Yeah, they did. Richard Jefferson is the better of them. What an outstanding talent he is. Kobe Bryant might be a little bit tired. Missed that free throw. He's one for seven from the floor in the second half. But he was splendid in the first half. And I'm sure he's not done. We've got 6.48 to go as he got the second. Kings lead by three. He's the kind of guy, Kobe, who, who can just have the most horrendous stretch. Then all of a sudden, quick, the light goes on and the magic is perfect once again and all is right in the world. Paul Weber all alone, Jimmy Jackson. And the quick hitting attack. Jackson knew Shaq was coming, but if he pumped fake, Shaq would have got there. Never even came to a stop, Jim Jackson. What a pickup. Now the lead is back up to five. Dangerous time for the Lakers unless they find some offense as the Kings have matched their biggest advantage of the night. Jackson on Bryant. He'll take the shot over him. Very difficult shot by Kobe Bryant. Kings have numbers. Four on two. Bibby against everybody. The ball still loose. Jackson scores. We talk about the infusion of talent. Bill Jackson has to take a timeout. He does not have it. Rick Adelman, seemingly unlimited firepower on that bench. And now it's a seven-point lead. As Jim Jackson scored a couple of times, Sacramento in an 8-1 run, and they lead by seven. Wide open. And Brian Shaw pushes Rick Fox. And that pushes Bill Jackson to the edge of exasperation. And what is going on out here, guys? There's no communication. There's no decision making. You never want to get beat back door. If they hit a jumper in your face, stepping away from the basket, you right. can live with it. But to give up a layup, when you're already facing a, a monstrous climb to get out of the hole that you've dug for yourself. Kobe Bryant trying to end the three-plus minute drop and can't. He's not getting a lot of good ball movement from the Lakers right now. It's just one guy dribbling, nine other guys standing around watching and waiting. Lakers have missed their last five shots. Weber off the pass from Bobby Jackson. Rick Fox with a rebound. Golden opportunities missed. Christie's missed some. Weber that time. Shaquille O'Neal against Clark. Big swooping move and drew a foul. It's going to be four on Clark. Coming up in February from Dick Wolf, the creator of Law and Order, Ed O'Neill, and Sweet Hoda, Alabama star Ethan Embry. The badge is back, folks. Dragnet, just the facts, ma'am. Coming in February to ABC. Not quite sure what Keon Clark did wrong there. He just seemed to stand in the lane with his arms and shoulders back. He goes to the bench, and Vlade comes back in. Four fouls. The instructions for Kobe Bryant of about a little bit more ball movement, getting other guys involved. You can always get that shot off the dribble. Shaquille's second point of the fourth quarter. Makes it a six-point game. Just over five minutes left with Bill Walton. David Aldridge, Mike Tirico, Tom Tobin, and Amad Rashad. I'm Brad Nestler with our ABC crew on this Christmas night from Staples Center. And Derek Fisher stopped Mike Bibby, something he was unable to do in the Western Conference Finals last spring. Nice passing. Bobby Jackson all the way across the lane, dished it back to Weber, who was fouled by Fox. And that's five Cameron? fouls on Rick Fox. As Weber goes to the free throw line, we'll be going to David here shortly. Fox with five. Weber with 21 for the game. With the penetration of Bobby Jackson making it all happen. Laker guards, Laker perimeter players normally expert at shutting down that penetration. Jackson just too creative, too much of a free reign there setting up Chris Weber. this game presents for the Lakers is that this gives the rest of the league hope. Guys, Phil Jackson said, uh, out of the timeout, they're spacing
shooting is not very good right now. They're dropping in on shot, and the other guys are not getting to that second pass, which will lead to the open shot. That's the area where they're having problems. Somebody's got to score other than Shaq and Kobe. Same old story for L.A. You saw that last possession. There wasn't even a second pass. Kobe trying to cut through the lane, run into a ton of traffic, and turned it over. Kings are playing so well right now. Stoyakovic can't even get in the game. He, he knew Turkaloo and has been forgotten about. Jackson again. And knocked what? out of there. And Bobby Jackson says, what is a foul? And he's checking to make sure he's still got all his fingers on his left hand, but it was... He, he, he needs help. He's got something wrong there. We can only hope his fingers are okay. Left ring finger looked like the one he was grabbing as he went through the lane and Shaquille O'Neal knocked it out of his hands and out of bounds. It's a tough guy, Bobby Jackson. And if he has to go out with 425 to go because of his finger, something is real wrong. Bimmy's blocked by Fisher. The door is still open for the world champions, but they're down by eight. Kings are going to have to battle through the referees here. Just over four minutes, under ten on the shot clock. Kobe Bryant straight on, looking at three. Chris Webber and Mike Bibby time. Two-man basketball. Here's one of them against Fisher, who blocked his last shot. Now around a Webber pick. That leaves Jackson alone momentarily. Missed the three. Kobe Bryant another rebound. Shaq's on the run. Kobe Bryant has matched his career high with 15 rebounds. Fisher got a big shot. The lead's down to three. The game's down to three and a half. And out of bounds, there was no foul call, and then he tried to shake it off, and the pain was just too intense over there in the corner. And as Bill said earlier, he's a tough guy, and if he's in that much pain, he's hurting. And that finger dislocated apparently from what we know and we have to know which which joint is dislocated and the index finger is an incredibly difficult one to play with right after that occurs the middle finger being the easiest one from what we heard we thought it was ring finger and meanwhile back to the live action the foul on fisher is his fourth finally the kings get to the line the pregame show was that today it was, it was quite a while ago, but yes. We talked about the mental toughness of the Sacramento Kings and their ability to overcome the psychological collapse from a year ago. We're going to learn a lot in the next three minutes, 18 seconds. Mike Bibby is only two out of five. Now three of six from the free throw line. He got the second of two. It's a four-point game. Three, 15 left. You can't expect Bibby to be at the top of his game. The loss of Jackson here is huge. Kobe Bryant looking for help, looking for the big guy who backs out. Kobe Bryant against Bryant. Bibby Jackson. Way too much dribbling. And lost it again. Stoyakovich, Jackson, and Bibby come out of the pile together. Nice passing. Jackson with a finish. Jimmy Jackson, that is. If you're Sacramento, dig in. Go for the kill here. Don't go for the one-point victory at the buzzer. Fisher short on a three. Oh, Blotter in the right spot. How could Blotter not get that rebound? Kobe Bryant looking for a pick. Fisher. Not Again, close. short. Shaq keeps it alive. Nobody can rebound. From over the top, the transition game. The trademark of the Sacramento Kings. Jimmy Jackson able to finish because of the running and the nice decision making of Pedro Stoyakovich. And Weber has been it. hot from that spot. That's 10 in the quarter, 25 for the game. Now we're seeing the championship response from the Sacramento Kings, and all Phil Jackson could do is call timeout and say, too much dribbling and too much wild erratic shooting. Where's the team game? Kobe Bryant lost the last time they were down the court. Now his team is trailing by eight. They might be able to pull the upset. We'll see. That's football. This is basketball, and we got two minutes left. Are you doing that game, too? I'm doing that one. I had to take a day off to come and meet you for the Dallas game. <laughs> Whistle and a foul. Sacramento 
cannot let up one iota. Their defense has to get more aggressive. This is the time of the game where the referees don't want to call a foul. But if they just start conceding plays at the hoop to the Lakers, there's a ton of time left. The momentum can switch instantly. Right. Kobe Bryant is a free throw away from his season average, which is third in the NBA. Chris Webber, who saw Vlade Divac's failure on the last rebound, said, look, I'm taking over here. I'm taking over here. Six-point game. Don't wait too long. Dominion's a point guard walking the ball up the court. What's that about? Only Bibby's fourth game back. Jackson around a Weber pick. I pass it, Ivan. So long. But Chip Jackson has been the star of the game. He really has been in this quarter, especially. He was out of the lead. Lakers need a miracle. And they've only got 90 seconds to create one. Fox for three. Lonnie with a good a position for the rebound. A defensive rebound. Who would have ever thought? And believe it or not, some fans are leaving. Yes, they are. for the exit. Still have a minute 12 to play. You must not know about Robert or Weber. That's been Weber's spot. Fox with a rebound. Fox only one for eight from the floor, but he gets a big board there. You have to make the Lakers take time off the clock here. Kobe is alone. Long ball. Too short. Get on the floor. Anybody want to win? Several guys hit the deck, but it's the Kings that come out of the pile with it. And Bibby goes all the way to the hole with it. Ball game. Ten-point game, 47 seconds remaining. The Kings showed up. They showed you something, didn't they? They showed me a lot tonight. I agree with you. They were down. They looked dead. They looked flat. Jim Jackson comes in. Bobby Jackson did it. And Gavin Maloof, while he's not dancing, he's thinking that 30 grand on those seats looks better, doesn't he? <laughs> They're doing fine. <laughs> I don't think they have to worry. I didn't mean that. Beautiful drive. The passing. The teamwork. Whereas we're seeing that from Sacramento, the Lakers are the team that's falling apart. And the, the buoyed spirits, the emotional outbursts. It's wonderful to watch here for Sacramento. Sacramento looking for its 23rd victory of the season as we check in with Mike Tirico. Hey, Brad, if the Lakers lose here, I'll give you some teams. The Knicks, Miami, Chicago, Toronto, Cleveland, Memphis, Denver, and Golden State. Those are the worst records in the league, and those are the only teams that the Lakers have better record than. So that tells you that LA's right here at Christmas time starting to get to the major concern area, don't you think? Well, I, I think a big deal is the mental breakdowns on defense. You just saw right there an easy layup. We've seen that four or five times throughout the course of the game. Mental breakdowns on offense. I'm inconceivably forgetting about Shaq. You can't forget about that guy. And then let's give credit where credit's due. They're talking about the Kings who've been down seven points, came back, down seven again, came back, finally down 12 in the second half, came back from that, and looked like they're going to win the game. Brad, if the Lakers get lost 19 here, it'll be on Christmas night. Lost 19 last year, came two days after St. Patrick's Day on March 19th. Yeah, Mike, and you know, when you put it in perspective, if you think about the Western Conference, who was the last team to make the playoffs last year, that team had a 44-win record. That means, and David sort of alluded to it a little bit earlier, you'd have to play 73% winning basketball just to get to the playoffs that means the lakers right now the way i have it done would have to go 39 and 19 from here on out just to make the playoffs and these are the three-time world champions you don't think they're looking at lebron james do you? oh well they're closer to lebron james <laughs> than they are the playoffs i'll tell you that much and shaquille o'neal and kobe bryant has not been a good half and both were brilliant in the first half especially kobe who really came out of the blocks he's tied his career high with rebounds tonight but he has struggled here in the fourth quarter, and Shaq's been almost non-existent. And Tom touched on that earlier. He's got two free throws in the fourth quarter. The expectations that this formerly great team can just turn it on and turn it off whenever they choose, that's starting to fade like the receding tide yeah. at Santa Monica Bay. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal fouled. That's where he's done most of his work tonight from the free throw line. Fouls on Weber, his fifth. 
Shaq's hit 10 free throws tonight. This game can provide such a psychological boost. The upcoming schedule for Sacramento, very difficult and challenging. At Portland, Saturday night. Then they head east. Where they play at Milwaukee, at New Jersey, at Minnesota. Fox picks up the foul, and that'll be it for Rick. Critical that the Lakers stay together. Worst thing that could possibly happen. This is Christie who has injected herself and into the fray. The same way that Glenn Rice's wife from Houston, uh, when they were with the Lakers here, became part of the show. Thirty-seven point eight seconds remaining. And as Bill said, uh, many of the purple seats are showing now in what was a packed and electric house at Staples Center tonight. George, good pass if you want to look at it that way to Shaq. First field goal for Shaq. It was definitely a pass. In this half. They just killed the clock here now. This is what I don't understand. Why you would hold on to that ball. Because in the NBA, you have to foul the ball. Right. And if you just keep it on the move and make them chase you, they can't stop the clock. So Devin George becomes the second Laker to foul out. And you take a look at the Pacific Division, the Western Conference standings, and, and that is not what you expect to see. The Lakers, two games ahead of Golden State. Not even two games, actually. I did not have the Lakers in last place yeah. in my pool on <laughs> my Christmas. I didn't either. <laughs> So the final 20 seconds, Kobe Bryant trying to get Jim Jackson up, can't. Jim Jackson's defense has been outstanding here. Shaq rips one down. So this has been a day made for a king. In this case, a whole team of kings. Sacramento is going to be going to 23 and 8. And the Lakers on the return to greatness. And you look around at all these people who have been here for so many years, through all the great teams and all the great players, and these fans are saying, what has happened to the Los Angeles Lakers? Stojakovic, they haven't needed his scoring. His third quarter is what really got Sacramento to believe that they wouldn't relinquish, relinquish now. Fisher hits a three, it's too little, too late. And the Lakers are walking up the court. Walking off their home floor with another setback. And as Bill said, you can just tell that the crowd is stunned. It's just that simple. They had the lead at half by four. They gave it up to Sacramento as the Kings played an excellent third quarter to take the lead. And then once they got it, they just held on to it and choked it for all it was worth. And Bill said, they need to go for the juggler right now and just keep pushing it. And they kept pushing it. And they win it by a score of 105 to 99 as we check in with David Aldrich. All right. Chris, you said before the game that you trade a win in December for a uh, championship in June. But it's still a nice win, I would imagine. Yeah, first of all, I'm glad to be doing this today. Christ is born. But you're right. I mean, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we came out aggressive but not over aggressive. As you could tell in the first two, three quarters, we couldn't get our bearings about it, so, but that's what you learn as a good team. This wasn't more pressure than game seven, so actually, uh, we were a lot calmer, but uh, we're gonna be ready. I mean, I think we needed this is almost like our mid-season playoffs, if you can call it that, and uh, hopefully this will keep us to be level-headed the rest of the season. Jimmy Jackson in the last fourth quarter gave you a big loose, especially when Bobby Jackson went out with the, the injury. You know, we, we, we had players get uh, injured early, and it just seemed like we just kept getting good players. He and Damon Jones come in, done a great job, and Jimmy's a physical presence in there, and that's something we've been lacking, and, uh, he and Paige are together in there. Those three, four positions, two, three are incredible. All right, Chris, enjoy the holiday. Thank I'm sure it'll be an easier trip back. Thank you. Back to you, Brad. All right, fellas. So 22 and nine, partner for the Kings, and has the shifting of power become a complete reality on this Christmas Day of 2002 now? I was very impressed. It is definitely tilting right now for Sacramento, but not just for the Kings, but for the rest of the league too, right. because the once invincible Los Angeles Lakers 
they have been exposed right now. They've been getting outworked. Their defense is no longer stopping anyone. And this game has to give the entire league an incredible level of confidence that they can take it right to the three-time defending world champion Lakers. Sacramento just did that today on this Christmas Day. They win it. 105 to 99 is the final. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword ABC Sports. Now except on the West Coast, we remind you to stay tuned for your local news over most of these ABC stations. For Mike Tirico, Tom Tolbert, Ahmad Rashad, David Aldrich, and Bill Walton.